Hi hey guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about some of the articles on Geeks for Geeks which have incorrect solutions or which are incomplete or which do not have like the most optimized solution. So yeah, one of those articles is this, uh, which is basically a coding question, which goes by the name of minimize the maximum difference between the heights. So I'm not going to actually explain the question here and also the solution which they have published. I will just highlight that this is wrong. So like uh, the source is that this question was asked in Adobe interview and the thing is that the solution which these guys have published here is actually incorrect and the correct solution is uh, actually given on lead code like i had also nine months back i had also published a comment here that this solution given here is wrong the actual correct solution is given as part of this problem lead code 910 smallest range 2 so whenever you guys are solving this question or you guys encounter this question in an inter interview so like make sure you solve it correctly just like i have seen some of the people who just memorize the questions and solutions from the geek for geeks and end up like if you'll do this here so you will eventually end up solving it incorrectly so anyways this is like one of those articles you can note it down its name and it was asked in adobe interview so the question given here is this like this question is present on lead code as well by the name smallest range 2 and you can see the solution here i think my internet is a bit slow today so this is not opening anyways okay yeah this did open so yeah the solution which these guys have given is actually the correct solution anyways so the second article is this one uh, the digixtra algorithm digixtra shortest path using priority queue of c++ standard template library so this article is not actually like the solution given here is actually correct but this article is does not contain the most optimized solution which can be built using std priority queue and the problem here is that like what happens when you implement digixtra using priority queue is that some of the vertices will be repeatedly inserted in the priority queue so you eventually end up like iterating like some of those vertices for the vertices which are adjacent to those vertices will be like iterated repeatedly and there is a way you can avoid this but like that way they have not done here i will tell you how we can avoid that thing so the thing is that uh, it is given on the top coder and like a year back I also published this comment here that the most optimized solution is given here on the top coder so the top coder solution is this one using std priority queue so what they have done is that whenever they pop out a vertex before iterating like this here they are, they are using a c++ macro so what the c++ macro is doing is it actually iterates over all the adjacent vertices and it tries to figure out if a uh, lesser distance can be obtained for the adjacent vertex or not but anyways how you can basically avoid repeated iterations in priority queues that you can actually check whenever you have popped this vertex this top but uh, sorry this vertex you can check the d which you have obtained which was there in the priority queue that d is less than equal to the actual distance of this vertex or not okay this v is this dv and they have also commented out here that this check is very important we analyze each vertex only once the other occurrence of it on queue added earlier will have greater distance so this way you can avoid repeated for loop iterations but this check if you say here they have not done like they just get this vertex and eventually iterate over the adjacent vertices of it so this for loop will like go on repeatedly for one particular vertex but anyways this was one of those articles and like another way is that you can implement Digixtra using std set as well but uh, anyways now you know how to implement the most optimized solution using std priority queue as well so and the third article uh, is this one which is actually this article is a bit incomplete so what this article is about that you have to implement your own shared ptr in c++ so like c++ introduced the concept of smart pointers they are like three smart pointers unique pointers uh, shared pointer and weak pointer so let's say you are sitting in an interview let's say tower research interview because they ask a lot of c++ so in that case like someone might ask you in interview that implement your own custom shared ptr class so this is one of the articles which where they have actually done this so this article is incomplete why this is incomplete is that for shared ptr they implement the constructor they also implement the copy constructor and somewhere they have also implemented the destructor and they've implemented this star operator this dereference operator and this arrow operator and this uh, get method as well but what they have and yeah use count also they have implemented but what they have not implemented is the assignment operator and the move constructor and move assignment operator like 
uh, without these three things this article is incomplete like the your shared ptr class is incomplete i mean if you end up writing this implementation in an interview like i don't think you would make it to the next round but yeah and the funny thing is that actually shared ptr like there are a lot of custom implementations of shared ptr present on internet and most of them are either incomplete or incorrect like a few uh, months back i was also you know looking out for these articles like checking how we can implement our own custom shared ptr so i found one one of the article i found was this on geeks for geeks again this was incomplete and the other article was on this medium so this medium article also does the same thing that they have implemented their own c++ shared ptr how you can write your own but this is incorrect this article is incorrect because what they have done is that in case of copy assignment operator like here they have implemented the copy assignment of the assignment operator operator equal to what they are doing is that when they are they are copying this point this obj pointer into this pointer okay by this i mean that the this okay when they are copying this they do increment the ref count of uh basically the pointer pointed by this obj but they do not decrement the ref count of this pointer okay the pointer which was being uh, uh, the memory location which was being pointed by this pointer earlier okay so they are not decrementing the ref count here and that is actually necessary to do otherwise this is incorrect and like i will also show you why that is that should be done like uh, one second yeah so this is like one of the c++ books effective modern c++ okay so this book highlights one second yeah like this is like the bible for c++ okay all the c++ effective c++ series books which have been written by scott mayers like they are the bible of c++ like i have learned c++ by reading his books only i mean you guys can also try his books if you are interested in c++ but anyways what it says here in the highlighted part is that if sp1 and sp2 are std shared ptrs to different objects and the assignment sp1 is equal to sp2 modifies sp1 such that it points to the object pointed to by sp2 okay so that was what his copy assignment operator was also doing but the net effect of this assignment is that the reference count for the object originally pointed to by sp1 is decremented while that for the object pointed to by sp2 is incremented so in his implementation he is incrementing the like the ref count of this sp2 but he is not decrementing the ref count of sp1 so that's why this article is incorrect okay so yeah i think these are the only three things which i had in this video so anyways thank you guys for watching please do not forget to like subscribe and comment on this video and i'll see you all next time